Yonda pot! My name is Sorella Moore and welcome to this finance and freedom channel. One of the subjects on this channel is freedom and there isn't anything much more free to me than being able to live wherever you choose to live or moving around as much as you want because your work is online ultimate freedom. In this video, I'm sharing in on my experiences of being a digital nomad. And if I had to choose some places in the world to live for $1,000 USD a month, I'm gonna list them here. Before I get into this video, if you are new here, I highly recommend that you subscribe. We put out videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And I have to say, this community is amazing. We're growing so fast. Thank you to everybody for being here. Secondly, we have an amazing newsletter. Highly recommend on extra exclusive information on all things finance and freedom. And lastly, we're giving a huge discount for lifetime access to our new course membership that we have just launched on all things finance and freedom. So if you'd like to find out more, there's a link in the bio for that. I don't think I need to really explain to you what a digital nomad is anymore because YouTube is filled with people that are gallivanting the world and rubbing it into your faces. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that. So in this video, I'm gonna try to make it more possible for you if this is a area of life that you wanna be exploring more. To me, digital nomad just means that you have zero ties to a location. Oh, the freedom experience with that. There is downsides to being a digi digi di di digital nomad. <laughs> Having been one for a big chunk of my 20s, I know that it is nice to at times have roots and to have your own door where you return back home and things are familiar, the country's familiar, you know how to operate in those countries. Also your friendship group, you can expand it and really nurture that friendship group because when you're a digital nomad, there are limitations, but the upsides are worth it. Even if you experience this type of life for a short period of time, just to know what it's like, because you get to experience so many different beautiful cultures and you get to immerse yourself in the beauty of humanity and you see that the world is actually so beautiful and everybody's most people are really nice i very rarely come across people that are not the safety levels also of most countries that i've ever experienced are much higher than we're told the media is one thing and that's why i think experiencing the world through the lens of your own eyes to see the truth of the world is recommend highly. And I will say that I found in my own experience that being a digital nomad is a lot more affordable than actually living in one spot. I know that sounds counterintuitive. I might have to do a video about this, breaking down the cost that I had when I was living out of a suitcase and now <laughs> having a full-time home. <laughs> so if you don't have that many ties and you don't have to pick up your whole family with you, I do think that it's actually Good value for the buck. Needless to say, let me share with you some experiences of places I think are amazing to call home if you have a smaller budget right now, because it will make you realize that this is very much doable for yourself if you're starting out. A thousand dollars a month if you're learning to generate this is doable. Some of the countries and places that I'm going to be mentioning, it is Leon's top suggestions, and then there are my top suggestions, his and hers. Thousand US a month, for sure, I'm not gonna say you're gonna have a flashy lifestyle, so that's not what we're aiming for here. It's just essentially to give you some hope. If you're just starting out, it can give you something to reach for and make it really achievable for you. You also have to consider that a lot of these places, depending on your passport, you won't be able to live there year round. You can't just pick up and go and voila, done. <laughs> it's more likely that you'll have to apply for a longer term visa and then just keep moving around country to country throughout the year. These country insights might also be interesting for those people that live in a really expensive country and they're just bored of that world that drains their bank account just for existing in these places. I can say Iceland is one of these places for sure. It's so incredibly expensive. So if someone's looking for a bit of a break so they can catch up financially, maybe moving to these countries for a while would be beneficial for you. Remember that this is not a one size fit all. You have to check what your qualifications are with your passport, how strong of a passport you have in order to go to these places and live there for a certain period of time. So of course, this is just suggestions and you have to do your own research as always. I'm sure you're not really surprised that I'm mentioning Bali. Most people, when they think about digital nomads, we automatically think Bali because there's so many digital nomads over there because there's a reason for it. It is quite affordable and the lifestyle there is incredible. It's super comfortable. I've been to Bali many times. The people are so nice and it's so fun on the little motorbikes going around everywhere. I really, really enjoy Bali. There are some downsides that I've been experiencing with Bali in the later times that I was going. Essentially, there was just so Oh, many tourists going there, like me, how dare they? <laughs> it was just getting a little bit out of control when I was there last, especially around the Changu area, which I adored initially going there about five or six years ago. And then it just started getting a bit 
too intense with the Australian drunkies <laughs> going out to party all the time. My people are savages. <laughs> there is something magical about tropical living though. I mean, you have access to these delicious mangoes for so affordable. The fruit there is affordable beyond belief. The <laughs> delicious food that they have man they cook so well you have these of course cafes that are popping up left right and center because all australians decided to move from australia to bali and now we have in a bali an amazing cafe scene with you have avocado and toast and the best coffees ever mate it's just a comfortable lifestyle mix that with a culture that's a bit more lenient in some ways in some ways it feels like you can just be a rebel and live large the other upside is that it's quite easy to get a long-term visa in bali for most passports but just watch out for the temptations that you have over there of partying non-stop and just spending way too much cash on all these flashy things and whilst i do believe that the price of bali is going to continue to go up because all of the foreigners are flocking there i do think that you can still live there for about one thousand dollars a month if you just move out of the touristy popular areas of course because there's so many digital nomads in bali the internet speed is great and readily available. Riga, Latvia. This would be Leon's top choice if he had to live somewhere for $1,000 a month. We went to Latvia a few years ago, kind of by accident. My mom, she was really excited to go there <laughs> and we went. Leon was a bit wary. He wasn't sure why mom would choose to go to this tiny little country in the EU that not many people know about. If you don't know, it's a country in the north of Europe on the Baltic Sea and it is between Lithuania and Estonia. But it is kind of weird how quiet people are around Latvia because it's actually a phenomenal country. If you want to have that European vibe, this is a country you want to explore. The internet speeds here are incredible. The food, if you like heavy European food, for sure. I grew up with this and so did Leon, Polish background, Austrian German <laughs> background. So we love this kind of food. Most people also speak really good English here. The people are incredibly polite and so nice and so switched on, like really switched on. Riga has a lot of that Soviet charm, but also it it is a beautiful area downtown. It is magic. You feel like you're stepping into a different time zone. We personally only experienced this during winter. So we've heard that it's extremely green during summer, but we had a great time even in winter. It does get brutally cold there in winter. So you have to keep that in mind. Secondly, it doesn't exactly have the tropical feel. So if you're looking for that, this wouldn't be the best place for it. Also, if you don't have an EU passport, you'll only be able to live in Riga, Latvia for 90 days out of 180 days for every 90 days that you are in. In Riga, you'll have to leave the EU for 180 days. So that's the downside, but it's okay if you're willing to move around a lot. I mean, 90 days is still three months. That's you can experience a lot in three months. But with all the amazing cafes and co-working spaces and a really, as I said, switched on crowd, I think it'd be quite easy to meet amazing individuals here. So it's a good choice. Costa Rica, baby. I love Costa Rica. I had the pleasure of experiencing this country a few years back and I went funny enough during the rainy season and it was <laughs> magic. It rains a lot, but only during a certain period of the day and the, you can just lie in a hammock and enjoy yourself while listening to the sound of rain it's pretty spectacular it's really warm most of the year the downsides of Costa Rica I think it actually would be a little bit hard to live off $1,000 a month there. I don't think it's the most affordable place. I think you would be scraping by a little bit because there are so many people going there. It is a really popular place to be, especially if you are in that section of the world. Costa Rica is a very easy place to go to because they are very welcoming to foreigners. You do encounter a lot of English speakers there as well. So nothing really uncomfortable for people that are most used to experiencing, say, like the UK or Canada or Australia or America, this country in the South Central Americas is the least culture shock, I think, because it is very nice and comfortable to be there. That standard of living is very high. But if you love the Spanish culture, I think there's something here. Bali was very much Asia, obviously, but this is just, you know, that more rich culture of dancing and expression and spirituality on the deeper levels. It feels very sensual in a way, this country. <laughs> That's the way I could think to describe it. And also the internet speed is very, very good in Costa Rica in most places. Istanbul, Turkey. This would be Leon's second pick. I personally have not yet been there, but I'm very excited to go. Leon has been there once before and he loves it. He thinks it would be absolutely an amazing place for people to live there on a budget of $1,000 a month. Istanbul is situated between Asia and Europe over Turkey's Bosphorus Strait. Basically, you could choose to live in Asia or Europe depending on what part of the city you live in. For Leon, it's 
the food and it is the culture. Istanbul is one of the oldest cities in the world with over 1,000 years of history. Leon adores the ancient architecture, the mosques, the history, but he says that the food there is absolutely exceptional. It's one of his favorites. He cooks a lot of Turkish food for us, which is amazing for me. <laughs> you can eat extremely well on a really low budget. A ton of people speak English and Turkey and the internet speed apparently is very, very good. So perfect for the nomadic lifestyle. And for $1,000 a month, you would absolutely have a great budget in order to have your own apartment or a cute little Airbnb in order for you to live in. With your budget, it would cover the food, the transport and entertainment every now and again as well. And Leon has said that it is some of the best coffee that he's ever had in his entire life from Istanbul. The downside that he has given me is that it is not a tropical lifestyle. So you're not going to be sitting around in a bikini on a beach, <laughs> but you can do that at the times of the year. So it is about diversifying your experiences as a digital, digital, digital nomad because you're able to. Finally, I would be battling between Mexico and Tanzania. Tanzania, I went last year and it was just a spectacular experience. I was in Zanzibar and Arusha. To me, Zanzibar is the ultimate turquoise water paradise. The internet here, not so good, but it is definitely affordable. Africa is one of the places I want to really experience a lot more of. I think the culture there is so rich and there's just so much wisdom to be found in these areas. So I would love to spend more time in Tanzania. There is an extremely laid back atmosphere in Zanzibar. It is not high vibes or fast paced at all. If you are all about lounging on the beaches and extreme heat and bungalows and lots of bugs, <laughs> then this place would be the one for you. And Mexico, I'm only mentioning it because there are places around the coastal area where a lot of digital nomads go. It is a hub for digital nomads. When it comes to the safety, uh, some people might be like wary about that, but there are areas where it's just so many digital nomads and they stick together in one hub. I'm not sure if I'd choose Mexico myself because I'd feel like I wouldn't be experiencing the culture there as much because I think the nomads just stick together like a uh, cheese and crackers. <laughs> and whenever I am traveling, I personally want to know what it's like to actually live there. And that means immersing myself with the locals as well and the actual culture of it, not just, oh my God, here at the cocktail, woo, let's go party with my friends that are not actually from here. So that's the downside of Mexico for me. I'm just going to give you a few more recommendations, not personally from my experience, but because they are very well known to be digital nomad hubs. And it would be a disservice if I don't mention these options for you as well. If this lifestyle is something that you're currently researching. Tbilisi, Georgia. So we're talking about Georgia. Georgia, the country here, not the Georgia state in the USA. Leon and I have not been here, but we can't wait to go there. It is so popular on the list for nomads to go and explore. So this is why we have to get there. Not only because apparently the internet is amazing, but they have great online services for online banking, payment processing, modern infrastructure. This country, I think, has made it a priority to make sure that digital nomads come here and they spend their money there. The country has made it very easy for small entrepreneurs to go and essentially permanently live in Georgia on a few residential permits. And the tax rate for entrepreneurs is super low at just 1%. For the purposes of this video, it doesn't really matter because we're talking about being a nomad and moving around the world. However, if you're looking for a more permanent base, Georgia could be the country. Also, it is beautiful. It looks incredibly beautiful. Apparently the wine there is the best because they claim that maybe potentially wine was actually invented here. And apparently it's also extremely affordable to live there so you can live it up for your budget of 1,000 US dollars a month. El Salvador. I actually really love El Salvador. I've gone multiple times now. I would have put this on the list up higher, but it needed its own little bracket because there's something very exciting about El Salvador. It looks like El Salvador is trying to become a haven for cryptocurrency holders. Recently, the government has made Bitcoin an official legal tender so you can actually pay for things with Bitcoins. <laughs> it is just as valid as the other currency in El Salvador, which is the US dollar. Furthermore, you can actually apply for residency in El Salvador if you have three bitcoins or the equivalent of that. You can see that El Salvador is trying to make this country a lot more appealing to stockholders, to traders, to digital nomads. I think it's a great step for the country. It is an amazing country. I thoroughly enjoy my time there. A lot of people have concerns with the safety, which I know that they're really trying hard to mitigate that and fix this problem. I personally felt very safe in El Salvador, but I was in a nice little area of El Salvador with a lot of amazing local friends that are there. So I felt really, really great there. If you want to speak 
Spanish, you will have to speak Spanish. <laughs> but that's an easy language to learn. It's also a bit of a culture shock, which I always love. If you're not someone that likes to feel a little bit of a culture shock, then I wouldn't use this one as the first country that you go to because the way that people operate, it's just a really laid back environment. People don't necessarily care so much about the rules. The food there is incredible though. The waves there are incredible. If you're a surfer, it is a vibe. It is such a vibe. You feel like the coolest person alive just being there. I love it. The skating scene there is amazing. The Brazilian jiu-jitsu scene there is amazing. The surfing scene. There's a lot, a lot on offer in this country and the people are incredible. Shut it. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Which country do you think you would be so inclined to go to? Also, if you have extra countries that you would recommend, if you're a digital nomad or you're experienced it, please let us know down below. I would love to know myself because I cannot wait to go traveling again soon. <laughs> It's gonna be really nice just to feel what it feels like to be a digital nomad again i'm really excited for that i've chosen to not travel much in the last 12 months which has been a shock to the system but i've learned a lot about myself and also gave us the opportunity to start new ventures like this youtube channel that you are such a huge supporter of thank you so much for liking commenting subscribing it's great to have you here just a reminder that we do have that amazing pre-sale going on right now for our course and membership i highly recommend you check that out if you'd like to get a huge discount for lifetime access and I'll see you in the next one.